As usual, we start with our Pilates breathing. Breath is the most important part of Pilates, and so we're gonna start with that. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling out through the mouth. You're gonna hear yourself exhale. Inhale through the nose, exhale through pursed lips. The reason why you want a somewhat forceful exhalation is because it recruits your abdominals. Now you might not have recruited your abdominals for that breath, but now we're gonna to start to bring focus to our body and tie it in with our breath. Inhale, lengthen the spine through the top of the head. Feel your whole spine, try to get as vertical as possible. And exhale, draw the abs in. Maybe your spine curves a little bit, but really it's about drawing the abdominals in. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, abdominals. Couple more times. Pilates is focused not on just our core musculature, which is anything that attaches to the spine and pelvis, but it's also focused on our alignments, um, symmetry, so trying to get right and left side equal, and on strength and flexibility, using our own body weight. Inhale, and exhale. If you're not on the front half of your mats, go ahead and slide your butt a little closer to your feet so that you can roll down and make sure that your head is on the mats. Inhale, and exhale, roll on down. I'm already really warm just from, uh, just from doing that because it's really hot in my house. Okay, so our feet are hip distance apart. I know you can't see that my feet are hip distance apart and your knees are bent. We're gonna continue to breathe. Inhale through the nose. You're gonna, you should see your chest rise or feel your chest rise and exhale, abdominals, Sink downwards. Good. Inhale. And exhale. Remember that our exhale's purpose is to recruit the abdominal muscles. And as we start moving in Pilates, you're going to see how that's very helpful. Good. Imprint the lower back if it's not already imprinted. Usually when we're just lying here, there's a natural curvature under, in our spine under the lower back. So now we're going to exhale, imprint the lower back, drawing the abs down and in. Inhale, you can release the imprint. Exhale, imprint. Inhale, release the imprint. So rather than think about squeezing your butt and like jamming your lower back down, you want it to be a recruitment of the abdominals, drawing downwards gently and slowly with control that tilts the pelvis back. And then when you inhale, you just kind of release all of that. Your tailbone will come back to the floor. Last time for now, exhale, imprint, and keep the imprint. So now the challenge is to breathe while imprinted. Exhale, lower a leg, keeping the knees bent at 90 degrees. Exhale, so we're recruiting our abs, keeping the imprint. Inhale, return. In this position, when our knees are closer to the chest, it's easier to be imprinted. As we exhale and lower a leg, it's harder to maintain the imprint, which is why we want to exhale and recruit those abdominals. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Good. Feel free to tap a little closer toward the butt if that feels more accessible to you. And you also do not have to take the feet all the way to the ground. Okay, we're gonna lower both feet or both legs. And again, I'm just gonna do that first one, maybe about halfway down and sort of test out my lower back in front. If I feel my lower back come up, I'm gonna pause on the lowering and then bring it back up. And as you get more and more accustomed to this exercise, you'll be able to maintain that imprint throughout the entire lowering of both legs. Very nice. Let's do one more. We're still exhaling on the lowering and inhaling on the lift. Good, go ahead and lower your feet all the way down to the mats. We're finished with this. Slide your feet a little closer. Shoulder bridge, your feet are still hip distance apart. 
Speaking of hip distance, a lot of times people put their feet too wide, and if you can see your feet, that means it's beyond or outside of hip distance. So they should kind of be hiding right behind your thighs. All right, we're gonna roll up into our shoulder bridge. And here we're aiming for neutral at the top. So imagine a straight line through shoulders, the hip joint, which is this nubby thing, and then your knee joint. Okay, we're not gonna draw that line through our butts. It's all about joint alignment. Inhale at the top, exhale, articulate, or roll your way down inch by inch. Keep the glutes engaged until the tailbone hits the floor. Inhale, prepare, exhale, roll it on up. Inhale, and exhale, coming back down. Two more times, at your own pace, with your breathing. So when you're ready to exhale, you roll it up. Reach those knees away from the shoulders. Inhale, and exhale, roll it back down. I said two more, but I can't remember how many I've done, because we do this so slowly. I think that was one. I am the worst at counting, I'm so sorry. Okay. Ab prep next. So notice that we lifted from the tailbone and rolled our way up. So now we're going to start from the head, the other end of our spine. We're going to nod the chin. Pretend like we're going to roll all the way up, lifting head, neck, and shoulders sequentially. But then we're just going to stop once our shoulder blades are off the ground. Inhale, hold. Exhale, shoulders, neck, and head. Good. You really can't do it out of order anyways. Inhale, exhale, head, neck, shoulders. Active reach, inhale, hold. Exhale, slowly roll down. Inhale, reset and prepare for the next one. Exhale. Arms are active, abdominals active. Eye gaze on the knees, inhale and exhale. Let's do one more and then we'll go into our hundreds. In hundreds, I'm gonna give leg variations so if you're familiar with hundreds, and if you want to keep your legs straight on the diagonal the entire hundreds, feel free. If you want to keep your knees bent the whole time, feel free. So leg position one, leg position two is tabletop, knees are over the hips, legs squeezing together this time. Position three is legs straight up, get a nice hamstring stretch, leg position four, less hamstring stretch, a lot of quads, but a lot of abdominal recruitment. All right, pick your position, nod the chin, reach those arms, Use your entire arms and pump those arms. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, ten. Inhale. Exhale, twenty. Inhale. Exhale, thirty. Inhale, straight those legs. Exhale, forty. Inhale. Exhale, lower those legs. Inhale. Exhale, sixty. Inhale. Exhale. 70, inhale, exhale, keep constantly reaching those arms, there's 90, last 10, and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, slowly hug the knees in, lower the head, good. So after exercises, I know you're fatigued, but you generally want to come out of it in a slow, safe, controlled manner, versus what I call the collapse to the floor. Okay, so our first exercise of the spine. Be careful, be gentle. Listen to your body. So I always like to use forearm assisted, I uh, use my forearms to assist in my first few ex uh, rounds of spine extension. We're gonna breathe, inhale. And I'm gonna exhale to release. Now this is interesting because normally you think you would be exhaling as you lift because that's the exertion phase, uh, which you can do, absolutely, if that feels more comfortable to you. Um, but the reason why they suggest inhale is because your ribcage are expanding as you inhale and you're lifting it up. We're going to keep the tops of the feet on the mat for now. And again, it's not about how high you lift the chest. It's really about feeling the muscles around your spine. Now, I know I'm looking at the video, but you want to tuck your chin and not 
too hard, but just a gentle tuck and keep your head and neck aligned with the spine. Taking the hands toward the toes. Open up the chest a little bit more. Lengthen or widen the collarbone, I should say. So you really want to have a lot of width across your chest as your arms reach back. This has nothing to do with your head looking up. Sometimes people think if they look up, they're actually expanding their chest more, but no, you're not. You're actually just hyperextending your neck. So get the motion from your shoulder blades. Your shoulder blades squeeze together and that's what opens up the chest. And you just wanna keep your chin down and the back of your neck nice and lengthened. All right, let's do one more here. And then you can take your hands underneath your shoulders and push yourself up and stretch the spine. You're gonna do the opposite motion you just did. So you're arching your back, so bending this way. So you're going to flex the spine to stretch it. How are we doing? Okay, you guys don't have to have your video on, it's always optional. All right, so now that we're on our knees here, I'm gonna work on this neutral exercise. If by some reason uh, being on your knees bothers your knees, it's helpful to have some more cushion underneath it so you can double up your mat like this. Um, and if, it, if it's really, really, really bothersome, you can do a plank. So what I call this is sort of a vertical plank. So your knees, hips, and shoulders are all, and your ears are all in a straight line. You're gonna reach your arms forward and instead of dropping your butt back, you're really gonna brace everything and just hinge back at the knees. So the only angle or the only joint that's moving are your knees. Now I keep my arms parallel, so I'm not like lifting up like that because that will put more weight into my body. So I actually kind of lower my arms a little bit, keeping it parallel to the floor as I lean back. So a couple of things besides bracing abs and squeezing butt and feeling it intensely in your quads, is that you don't want to overly squeeze your butt and not tighten your abs because then you'll arch like that. And if you drop your butt back, it takes away all the ab work. It's not to say that this is not very, very intense for the glutes and quads. It's just that it takes away the ab work. Okay, you can go back as far as you like. We're gonna exhale, really brace those abs, Squeeze abs, squeeze glutes, squeeze quads. Inhale, come back to vertical. Eye gaze straight ahead, just over your fingertips. Exhale, inhale. Looking very good. Exhale, inhale. Let's do two more. So plank is quite similar. You're squeezing your abs glutes and quads. Okay. And go ahead and sit on your butt. Check out those quads. Okay, so half roll back. We are going to be manipulating our spine again. Arms forward. You have your palms down. Half roll back is is what it sounds like. We're rolling, but we're only gonna go halfway back. So about where the top of your pants are. Unless you have extremely high waisted pants. Uh, if you're wearing normal waisted pants, it should go just sort of to where, where the hem of the pants are, or the top. Is that called the top hem? Is there only a hem at the bottom? I don't know hemming. I don't know the term hem. All right, I am sweating and I hardly ever sweat in Pilates. <laughs> so I really like this because no matter what, you'll feel it. You're always gonna feel it when you start to lean back. Now the question is, do you also feel it in your shoulders and neck? We wanna feel it in the abs without feeling it in the shoulders and neck. Okay, let's try some variations before we get too tired. So I'm gonna bring my palms in so they face each other, pretend like you're holding a big ball, and then we're gonna share that ball with each other. Hey, here you go, have the ball. And then you change your mind, you bring it back to center. And then you take it to the other side, 
You're going to give it to your other friend. Back to center, and then we are up. All right, let's do it with breathing this time. Inhale here. Exhale, go back. Inhale. Exhale. The thing is you're breathing while in exertion. It's going to be challenging. But just keep alternating that breath. Let's try it a couple more times. And you have the option to turn one direction, back to center, and then come vertical, and then do the other side. You don't have to go both sides each time, because we are staying down there for quite a little while. All right, if you've been going right first, just go the other direction first, so we're not favoring one side. And the idea behind in Pilates is we always are moving like we're in a slow motion movie, always slow motion. Good. We're going to roll all the way down and full spine articulation. So I'm going to have you guys start with the leg up. The leg can kick forward, which helps with the roll up. Now, if you want to do uh, the, the, the standard roll up, you can keep both heels on the ground. So let me show a couple of variations here. So I'll have one leg lifted. It doesn't matter which one. We're going to alternate biceps by the ears. Inhale, the arm reach to the ceiling, nod the chin, lift head, neck, and shoulders. And then you're going to get stuck here, so what you do is you kick the legs out, and that kind of gives you just the oomph you need to come all the way up. Stretch those hamstrings and lower back. Good. You're going to keep your legs down. You can keep your arms forward and slowly lower inch by inch. When your biceps come by the ears again, lift your other knee up. Inhale, arms. Head, shoulders, exhale, kick legs, and roll up. If you're still exhaling, inhale, start to roll back. Exhale, place the spine down. Feel free to lift the leg. I'm going to keep both legs down. When you have both legs down, you want to have really engaged leg muscles. Okay, the legs are not just passively lying there. Inhale, arms, head, shoulders, exhale, roll up. Dive toward the toes. Inhale. If you want more challenge, arms come up anywhere between your ears and straight ahead. And roll down. So that creates more challenge to the abs. There's a lot of ways you can make an exercise more challenging if you like. Inhale. All right, not going to do too many of these today, so we're going to end it right there. We're actually going to have you come back into tabletop position. Good. And I know sometimes without a mirror right in front of you, or a camera that where you're watching yourself being recorded, so you can't quite tell, is it 90 degrees? But a lot of times you can tell because of the how your quads feel. If, if your heels are down, your quads are actually relaxed, so you're going to start to feel it here. Now. Instead of the arms being on the ground like it was in the warm-up, the arms are going to be straight over the shoulders. Okay, this is called uh, Simon Says. No, it's not really, but we're going to just do one limb at a time. First the right. You've already seen this in the warm-up. Tap down and return. But this time your hands are not on the floor, so it's going to feel a little different. Just the left leg. Okay. The right arm is going to go overhead. That might be my left, actually, if you're mirroring me. And then your other arm. Okay. Let's try it one more time again. Exhale, one leg. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. The other leg. Stay imprinted. One of the arms. Exhale, lower. Don't let the ribcage pop up. So you don't, basically, when your arms reach up like this, sometimes your ribcage can pop up like that. So you don't want that to happen. That all requires abdominal recruitment. Okay, now here's the challenge, the fun challenge. It's going to be the right leg and the left arm, or whatever opposite limbs. Take your time, think about it. Now sometimes it's actually challenging to keep the leg bent while lowering an arm. So if that's the case, feel free to straighten the leg. So. I straighten opposite limbs. Well, your arm is already straight. 
I straighten opposite limbs away from each other, maintaining inference. Take your time. This is as challenging for the brain and coordination as it is for your abs. Good. So exhale to lower or reach, I should say, and inhale to return. Now, the next challenge, let's see, I started with left arm, right leg. So let's do one more on each side. And then the next challenge is we're gonna do same side, which normally you wouldn't do that, especially if you're on your hands and knees, but we're okay, we're on our back. We're not gonna fall anywhere. And it feels different. So pick any one side, same side. You don't have to straighten your leg. You can, you can do the bent version like this, so the toe taps. So do about three or four times on each side. So right arm, right leg moves, and then left arm, left leg moves. It feels different. It feels a kind of different challenge to the abs. I don't know if it's harder or easier for some of you. I would imagine it's just different for everyone. Okay, I'm just do one more time on each side. It really, really focuses on the abdominals, keeping the imprint. Good. All right, shake it out. And then we're now gonna do our ab series. Now ab series is all mostly in flexion. If your neck gets tired, then you go back down and you're in neutral. Um, but it's important to practice flexion work and also neutral work. So everything we just did was neutral work. Okay, lift the head, neck and shoulders, extend one leg, doesn't matter which, exhale. Inhale to switch, exhale, reach. Inhale, exhale, called single leg stretch. Option to stretch the legs toward the sky. See how that feels. If you want a little more challenge, the legs will go closer and closer to the ground. Foot cramping up, or you just really want to stretch your calves, push the heel out, flex the foot. You don't always want to be pointing the foot anyways. Vary it up throughout your Pilates practice. Good, hands behind the head, add rotation. Very little rotation. Most, most people rotate too much and it takes away the exercise. If you roll so much that your whole spine is off the ground, you have disengaged your abdominals. You basically just turned on your side. So you wanna keep the abs recruited, keep the shoulder blades, both of them off the ground, one higher than the other. These are your shoulder blades, both off the ground, one higher than the other. Exhale, twist, inhale the center, exhale, twist. Okay, legs to tabletop, reach arms up. Neck tire, put it down. Neck rested, bring it back up. Play with your angles. Find what's challenging but doable for you. Exhale, reach, inhale. Good. Last one. Leg up, scissors. We're gonna try to keep the legs straight, but feel free to bend a little bit if your hamstrings are tight. I'm gently pulling my leg towards my head will help me stretch my hamstrings a little bit. And now I'm going to take away my arms and allow my legs to pull itself toward my head. Keep those legs strong. Pull towards the head. One leg reaches, one leg pulls. Four, three, two, and one. Anytime you let go of your legs, especially for those scissors, you'll feel more on the abs. Because anytime you hold on to something, it's helping your abs. Okay, we're gonna do what's called a staggered lift here. Staggered spine extension. So you stack your hands underneath the forehead. On the inhale, you lift the chest, head and neck as one unit. I'm gazing right on my fingers. And then I'm gonna brace my abs. Yes, you do wanna brace your abs even though you're on your stomach. Brace your abs and recruit your spine muscles and float those hands to your forehead. Now you should feel your spine and then lower everything. 
Inhale, lift just the head, neck, and chest. Exhale, the hands follow. And on that last little bit of exhale, you lower everything. Inhale, exhale, and continuing my exhale. Inhale. Feel how much work that your spine feels when your arms lift off the floor and join your head. Yeah, that's how heavy your arms are, but that's not the point. The point is that you want to be braced and ready before your arms pick up. Because if you're not, if you're kind of relaxed and then you pick up, what happens is your whole head kind of starts to fall, your body adjusts or shifts, right? You want to be already prepared for that weight transition to happen so it's very smooth and seamless movement. Couple more, let's just do two more. You're prepared for the arms to float up. And we are bringing the arms to the forehead as opposed to bringing the forehead down to the hands. Go ahead and finish up on your last one and sit back for that stretch. How are we doing so far? We're gonna do some, um, uh, we're gonna do a plank variation here. So now that we're on our hands and knees. So the wrist is underneath the shoulders. That's always very, very important. And when you, um, when you shift, um, we're, we're gonna be doing a little shift like this. When you do the shift, don't go so far that it hurts your wrist. It's, it's really just about sort of creating abdominal challenge. It's not so much about the wrist or shoulders. Now your knees are underneath the shoulders. Nope, they're not. They're underneath your hips. Is anyone ever listening to me? Okay, tuck the toes under. From here, brace your abs. Spine is as neutral as possible. Soften your elbows. So if we're locked elbow, that's not good. Soften your elbows. Now float the knees an inch off the mat. That's it. This is challenging, but that's the exercise. Eye gaze on the floor right between your thumbs. If you've locked out your elbow again, it's a, it's a natural tendency to do. Just try to soften those elbows so we have muscle recruitment in the arm, shoulders, abs, and legs. If you're good right here, stay here. Otherwise, you can do a little shift forward and a little shift back. Just a couple inches. Inhale, exhale. Not so much to bother your wrist, just to create a little challenge. Inhale, exhale. Last one. Good. Shake it out. I'm going to try one more variation there. Um, option to do a plank on your elbows. Okay, there's a ton of plank variations. This is just one of them. If you have a favorite plank you want to do, do it. Um, but totally fine. Now, we're going to get back into our position. And before I actually come off my knees, let me just show you what we're going to do. We're going to actually do a, a, a leg extension or, so your knees are already off. So you're going to either do a leg extension or you're gonna do a butt kick. And when you do the butt kick, the knees don't move, okay? So that's option one. And then the second option is to lift the arms. We are not gonna be lifting the arms and legs at the same time. Okay, here we go. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Good. Brace your abs, take an inhale. On the exhale, kick your butt. Inhale, return. Exhale, other butt. Inhale. Exhale, lift an arm. Good. Now remember your feet are hip distance apart, so you should have the width to help you. Inhale, exhale, lift the other arm. So I didn't say hold it up, we just lift it. So you notice how quickly I did it? Good. I'm going to go around one more time. Lift the leg, but I'm going to straighten it this time. Good. Inhale, exhale, other leg. And then arms aren't doing much. You don't have to lift it the way I did, you can just lift, lift. All right, that's it, we did it. We lifted each limb twice. Shake out those wrists. Come to your side. We're gonna do a little bit of side work, side leg work, um, not too much here. Um, you're going to prop your head like so. Ugh. Yeah, so normally I have us down like this, but I think this will be a little more helpful. 
and the bottom leg is going to be slightly bent. That is going to be your kickstand because we are using this arm today as well as this leg so you don't have the arm as a kickstand. So basic lift here. Now you're not you're gonna get some shoulder workout, but I'm gonna be honest, it's not it's not a great shoulder workout. It's not a lot. It's more about the uh, coordination and the balance. That's why we're moving our arms. So my bottom foot is parallel to the floor. I mean, yeah, it is. And the kneecaps and toes are face forward, and the top leg only comes to parallel to the floor as well. Just keep breathing. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. All right, we good? That, that's the first exercise. Remember your bottom knee is bent. This will be crucial right here because we're going to reach the top arm forward and swing the bottom leg, I mean the top leg back. How are we doing? Brace those abs because um, I know you probably can't see it, but when you uh, swing arm forward and back, you don't want to arch your back. You want your spine to be absolutely neutral the whole time. Okay, do the opposite. Bring the leg forward and reach the arm back. Again, spine stays in neutral. There's range of motion in your hips. You should be able to kick your leg forward and back and not disturb your pelvis and your spine at all. So when I'm moving my leg, it's, it's not um, down here, it's at parallel. So that's where the work should be. Now find the full range of motion. Take your leg as far back as you can. Well, I took it too far back. And then as far forward. And your arm just goes opposite. And you should feel your abs when your legs go forward. And you should feel your abs when your legs go back. I mean, what I'm trying to say is you should feel your abs all the time. Okay, one more exercise. How are we doing so far? One more exercise. Bring it back to your straight and center. And we're gonna make small circles. We've done this before. You just haven't done it with your arms. Imagine your arm and your leg is connected by a string. It's probably hard to move them not together anyways. It's easier to move them together. Imagine I said, Make clockwise circle with your arms and counterclockwise circle with the leg. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> We're not doing it. Okay, reverse direction. Squeeze your leg nice and straight. Really reach out with the heel. You can also point your toe. Reach out the toe. It's a very, very engaged leg. And the circling happens at your hip socket. So you should feel this pretty intensely in the outer thigh. Okay, I said that was the last exercise, but I have actually one more. It's going to be the clamshell, and for this one, we're actually going to prop ourselves up onto our elbows. But when we prop ourselves, we're not going to sink into our elbows. We're here. If your feet are too close, you won't feel much. And if it's too straight, you won't be able to lift much. So I find that the right or most effective position is when your knees are about 90 degrees. So that has nothing to do with your hips. This is a probably 90 and 45, so 135. But it's not about those specific angles, really. So this is your clamshell. Your kneecap is doing an outward rotation. It's facing forward, it's facing high. That's external rotation. Now when your kneecap is facing up and then it faces down, like what I just did by lifting the foot, that's internal rotation. So now I'd like you to lift and open your clamshell, kind of figure out where your knee's gonna be in space, and then lift your toe. If you can get your knee all the way turned in where your, your foot is higher than the knees, that's, that's good, that's more internal rotation. If you want, you can touch the knees down like that. Sometimes it, it might help with 
recruiting the right muscles. But when you lower the knee, it does take a little bit away from that internal rotation. So do what works for you so you feel it right here. So that's internal, when our knee is up and then we turn it down. And then last exercise, lift those hips. Lift and open. Let's do four more of these. Side planks, stay strong in the obliques. Four, three, two, and one. Switch around. Woo. We're here. Grab some water if you'd like. Um, toes and kneecaps face forward. Remember this is neutral rotation, external rotation. We want neutral rotation. Lift and lower. Do you guys feel your shoulders by the end of all that? I kind of felt my shoulders. It was, it was more intense than I thought it would be. Exhale, inhale, or inhale, exhale. It, uh, I've seen both. The only option that is not available to you is the holding the breath option. We will not be holding our breath today or any day. Oh, I forgot. Bend the bottom leg. No wonder that was so hard for me. I thought I was going to fall on my face. Okay, so bend the bottom knee a little bit. And you, you want to you wanna use your imagination. You want to pretend there's like a cinder block or some heavy object on your leg so that you're recruiting all the leg muscles all the way down from hips, your butt down to your toes. Okay, let's do the swing. So first, set the leg up to parallel. The leg will stay parallel. Leg goes back, arm goes forward. Back to center. Forward. Return. Squeeze your butt, extend it back. This is a hip extension. You're uh, stretching your hip flexors. Does it make sense about keeping your spine neutral? Keeping your spine neutral. Let's do the reverse. Leg goes forward, arm goes back, and then recenter. You'll also notice as your leg goes forward that your hamstring feels like it's stretching. Sometimes at the end of Pilates, I don't really do a stretch because technically Pilates is a stretch and strength in one. As your quads are engaged here, your hamstrings are being stretched. Uh, so you're, you're getting just benefits of both in one exercise. I'm having trouble coordinating here while talking. Okay, let's do the full range. So arms go all the way forward, leg goes all the way back. So you have to coordinate it because if your arm swings faster than the legs, right, then it's no, no longer coordinated and it's no longer counterbalanced. You use your abs for counterbalance, for sure, but you also use the weight of your limbs. It's easy to forget about our abs because we're not we're not actively working our abs right now. But try to remember to draw them in toward the spine. Okay, we gotta do leg circles. So recenter. Oh, I shouldn't say recenter. We're gonna realign it to our body, but you don't want the leg to drop. It's gonna stay around hip height. I'd say about five or six. Slow, small circles in each direction. And uh, by the way, if you, want, if you want your hand on the floor, by all means do it. This is your workouts. These are just options. Lots of variation, lots of options. Okay, got enough of there. Bend the knee, prop yourself a little higher. Again, remember, stay strong through the shoulder.
stay lifted through the obliques. And we're going to start with a clamshell. Feet stay together, toes, knees come apart. Feet stay together, knees come apart. Muscles working. Good. Let's go open up our leg. Maybe not so high, and then just just high enough so that you feel challenged when your toes come apart. It is also okay to keep your knees together and do this. It depends on what you feel. You want to feel work right around your gluteus, gluteus medius. Gluteus minimus, this is sort of the smaller side part of your butt. It's still part of your butt. It's just not the maximus. Good. So again, you want to see that knee angle change. Okay, you can go ahead and relax that. Strong through the shoulders, hips. I know we're not in a perfect alignment because we're not doing a normal side plank because we are going to add a clamshell to the lift and you still need to have a little bit of angle at your hip. For four, three, if you're in pain, just smile. Two, it helps. And one. Okay. Whew. Let's do a quick Lengthen of the body. All right, it's about 614, so we have like a minute left. I guess it could do a little bit of stretching. Or I could power through some teasers. We're going to do, what's today's date? It is the last week of May. Okay, so let's do teasers before it gets too hot. Bring your knees in, tabletop. Inhale, arms to the ceiling, nod the chin. Exhale, kick those legs up. Roll your spine up and then hug your knees back in. Inhale, open up, exhale, and then hug the knees in. So you wanna open up so you can counterbalance your torso and your legs, but then your knees come back in. Inhale, arms, head, shoulders. Extend the legs, basically you're opening up here and then you're closing. All right, and here's where you feel your abs. You open up, slowly roll down, and bring your knees back in. Two more times. Inhale, arms, head, shoulders, legs, spine comes up. Inhale, exhale, open, and roll down. Good, last one. Inhale, arms, head, shoulders. Let's try this, inhale. Exhale. Okay, now we're done. Takes us to 615 here. A couple cat cows, or what I call smiles with the spine, rainbows with the spine. Your spine goes from your head down to your tailbone. So make sure your head and pelvis are involved as you're doing this. Tuck the tailbone, drop the head, lift the tailbone, lift the head, but not like straining your neck to look up. Really, it's just about a natural extension of the head and neck with that spine. All right, I want to be respectful of your time. Sorry for going over a little bit today. Um, Thank you so much for joining me for Matt Pilates. Uh, if you have any questions, I can answer it um, through email or the chat or however you'd like to contact me. Um, and then feel free to stretch a little bit more on your own. Uh, but remember that Pilates, we do stretch and strength at the same time. So ideally, it's, a, it's a quite a balanced workout already. Let's take one more breath in though. Remembering to breathe, reach high, lengthen the spine, exhale, relax, roll the shoulders back. And think about that posture where the chest is up, the spine is lengthened, the abs are drawn in, and the shoulders are down and back. 
Thank you very much for joining me. And happy May. And I'll see you guys in June. <laughs>